I'm Patrick Davidson. Recently, CAPS Media collaborated with the Museum of Ventura County on a remarkable exhibit called InnoVision, Ventura County Artists to Watch. For the engaging exhibition, CAPS recorded interviews with nine outstanding artists in the county. Short segments from the interviews are included in the exhibition on display at the museum. For recaps, we're sharing the more complete interviews, where the artists share their personal stories and artistic vision. In this edition of Recaps, the featured InnoVision artist is Gladys Rodriguez. I came to the United States. I was born in Panama, the country, not Florida. Uh, Good for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Panama City. Pa- when I say Panama City, I have to follow up with Panama. Uh, so I was born in Panama. Um, you know, I came, I immigrated with my family here when I was 13, 14. It's blurry to me, and I have to look it up because I think I was turning 14, you know, before I turned 14, but it was like very, uh, it was only like a few months before my birthday. Um, and so I came here, you know, when I was very young, uh, very impressionable. Um, I went to Oxnard High School because we had family here um, in Ventura County. So, you know, we lived with our family for a bit. I went to Oxnard High School. An interesting thing happened that it turns out like my classes in Panama were a little bit more advanced in here. And so I ended up just jumping straight into the last semester of 10th grade. And so that push compressed everything up. One year to learn English. I had taken like in Panama, English people speak it like, you know, speak it a lot. It's, it's Spanish, but there's a lot of like, uh, obviously because Panama has a history with the US and the Panama Canal and things So people, there's a lot of people that speak English, but so I knew how to write it, you know, and express myself in writing, but speaking, you know, it's a little bit different, but I picked it up when, when you're young, picking up a second language, is just very easy. Um, and then I graduated at 16. I think it was like a few months before I was 17. And I was like, all right, all your credits are good. And so I didn't really experience like high school. You know, I did a little bit, but I was like ESL program. And then boom, I went into regular classes with like, you know, uh, full English speaking students. And so that like my adjustment and my assimilation happened very quickly. And, you know, you're young and it happens fast. I think it's like the best time uh, for me because, you know, you adjust really fast and you don't notice the change. Um, and so I went straight to Oxnard College. And so uh, college, you know, community college for me was like my more informative years. It's where like, it's like my high school, if that makes sense, because I was so young and then I went to college. And so that's where I kind of did my whole, um, started my, you know, um, sort of interest in actually considering and pursuing art when I start, started taking like art classes and things like that. And so that's like all of my, like my best sort of memory. So high school was just kind of like learn English, graduate, and then you get started in like Oxnard College. And so, so that's what happened. Um, and then from there, you know, I did the whole program, the whole cur- curriculum, I transfer out to Cal State LA. Uh, and I consider a lot of like more local options like this campus, but I kind of really wanted to, you know, step away a little bit outside of like the family, the things that were um, comfort or things that I was comfortable with. Um, and I felt like, hey, I'm gonna live on my own. I'm gonna just go to school and like, just do my thing. And that was really, really good because it really also helped me develop. I was in LA and, really being exposed to like the big city, you know, all the art, like, you know, uh, galleries and students. And I was, I felt like I, I had really good art professors. And so all of that kind of journey. So I didn't really take a break in terms of school. I never took like a summer break or anything. I was just like going through school. I really, really enjoyed school um, because it really, um, it was really good to, I like meeting people. So it was like, it, it kind of gave into the, an environment that you could talk to people about subjects that you were interested in because you're in, in there with everybody's curious and wants to do things. And, um, and so it was like really, really good. I had a really good experience um, and I did not take a break. And then I went into the workforce. <laughs> so I, I went to school for um, art, but with an emphasis in design. 
Um, I've always kind of been good with computers and things like that, but I wanted to do something not so technical, something that I could still be creative. So I was kind of pursuing both like art, you know, fine arts and, and doing art always. And then um, just having a job, you know, because of my background and things like that. So, um, yeah. What, what did you think your family about trying to be an artist? So that was very interesting. Actually, for the most part, my my family has always been very supportive. The what, my mom had two conditions for anything, right? Because I'm always like, you know, I I'm the middle child, so I always want to do, you know, whatever I want. Like I, I have a very strong opinions about what I should do, what I want to do, and things like that. My mom only had two conditions, which was go to school, you know, get an education. We're like an immigrant family. We're poor, you know, like we still have to survive. And um, so she was she always said, get an education and then just find a way to make ends meet, whatever that ends up being. So it was I was never um, uh, sort of like told to go into a certain career or area. They always knew that I was more creative, you know, growing up, I always was interested in art, painting, drawing, whatever it was. Um, so I think they always knew that I was going to go into something creative. They just didn't know what. Um, but my family like has always been supportive. There's never been like, oh, you shouldn't do that. You know, my mom's like, you can do as many things as you want, but just make sure that you do them all well, you know, and that you're able to financially support yourself. So I was like, OK, game on, you know, and I, you know, definitely sort of make sure made a sort of plan that, OK, I have to go to school. I have to get a job in something, but let me get a job in something that I will still enjoy, that I can still be creative in some sort of way. And it also gives me time to, you know, be creative in other ways that maybe a company or some corporate environment wouldn't support. Um, and, just, you know, so I still pursue like being an artist and things like that. So what jobs have you had, do you have that you enjoy? Um, so what I currently do, so I'm a, I do graphic design. So I'm a graphic designer. I work in this marketing team. Um, so it can be, um, you know, sometimes very stressful. It's a very stressful job. Uh, but, if, you know, I guess I found out that I can kind of handle that stress. It's very similar to when you're doing art shows. So I guess I had that sort of training through college that, oh, you know, there's going to be a group show, you know, next month. And would you want to be in it? Or so I'm like, oh, OK. So what the time I got to, like, you know, actually enter the workforce and being a designer, it's all deadline driven. And art shows are kind of like that, you know. You have your freedom to create your artwork, to do whatever you want, but there are things that you have to kind of, in order for things to, you know, happen. And in the beginning years of my career, I was organizing art shows for me and my friends. You know, we were all doing it together. You know, we would talk to gallerists, we would talk to friends, we would network, and then we would join up in these art shows. And a lot of the times, you know, you install your own artwork, you have to you know, some I'd help design the flyers. So like you do everything yourself in order for that particular moment to happen or that particular show to happen. So a lot of that sort of training went into my kind of like work ethic, you know? So it's like, oh, okay, whatever I throw, you know, gets thrown my way. I'm like, okay, I got it. <laughs> um, describe what your art side of it. I mean, I got the business side, I think, but mm -hmm. describe, is there a particular, and, and what inspires you? What, what do you draw on? So when I started um, in college, um, I had never taken like a f like a official sort of art class. I had never had instruction. A lot of it was like free flow, doing my own thing. But I always was curious about having a more more of a foundation to kind of make my work. And um, because I was so young from high school to um, college to art school, I didn't really know a lot about like art shows and things like that like oh you can attend them you can see like a variety of artwork and so that whole sort of inspired me and sort of got me really into thinking about what kind of work i can also make so from the beginning i've never really done like traditional painting or traditional sculptures or anything from the beginning i already came with a mindset like oh if i can do whatever i want i'm gonna do whatever i want and so i always been uh, into exploring different things. So for example, currently it's a journey, but I'm really interested in um, sculpture, sculptural work or um, installations or, you know, video pieces or just things that um, are not necessarily a traditional like uh, art uh, sort of 
um, mediums per se, but it all has that structural foundation from where I came from because I did have, you know, um, that kind of structure with art, you know, art school and everything. So I do have that foundation, but um, looking at the work that I wanted to do um, and what sort of like inspired me was a lot of introspective and a lot of, um, I think I really didn't process when I came to the United States because it happened so quickly, so fast, going through, like I said, no breaks, school, 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 do this, do that. And I like to keep myself busy. And I didn't really analyze how that was affecting me mentally uh, about adjusting. I felt like I adjusted very quickly because I'm a very like um, social person. So I adjust to people very quickly to social situations. But when the moment is down and you're and you're just you and yourself, then it's like, wow, I really think I just glazed over that moment or I glazed over what how I was feeling at the time. So a lot of that um, introspection led to the kind of work that I make today, which was, you know, I my family is so we're, you know, from Panama, we're Latin, we're Hispanic, but my mom is actually from Nicaragua and my mom is light skinned. So she has the more like Spanish kind of um, ancestry to her side. And my dad is black. So he's from, you know, in, in Panama where it's a lot of mixture of like, um, you know, mestizos, mulatos and like Afro Latino people as a whole. And so there was always that friction, like even in Panama, like I don't look like my mom, but she's my mom. <laughs> like I know she's my mom. Uh, but I don't look like her. You know, I look like a, more of my side's family, which has never been an issue, never been brought up. I remember a couple of times um, growing up and I would be at the store and I would be just calling like, oh, mom, this, mom, that, you know, and people would look weird, look at me weird. And now looking back, I'm like, oh, my God, they just probably thought I was adopted or it just didn't click because I look so different from my mom, you know, like maybe, we, you know, and so all those little things you know, through the years, glaze over it. It's okay, you know, I just moved on to the next thing, to the next thing. And when I got to college where they're really asking you, okay, you know, what is your work about? What are you trying to do? It became this whole um, sort of journey, like going back in time and then pulling out all these pieces of information that really shaped who I am today, but always left me uncomfortable. And I never knew why I was uncomfortable, right? And it's always, um, so things about like race and, and, and family structures and, you know, being immigrant and, you know, being a woman and, you know, so all those things about who I am kind of laid the foundation to what the artwork, to what my artwork is now. And my current artwork is literally making art with hair. And so it was always something, my mom was a hairstylist uh, for like a long time. So I've been around hair forever. Um, but it's always something that I noticed that People always be like, oh, you know, since I was little, you're so cute, touch hair, you know, and those things doesn't like when you're little, you don't really realize that, but it's people picking you out of the crowd just because something looks a little bit different. Um, and so I didn't realize, but ever since I was young, I've just been kind of singled out, you know, because I don't, the rest of my family doesn't look like me, you know like me and my dad and my other sisters so you know everybody else is more like light skin and so the things about colorism and race and how people look at you and what they say to you and what is considered a microaggression or not and so all those things uh, things piled up to the point that I was like huh let me take a look at this because I feel like the way that I see the world now is being very much informed about what happened to me growing up um and unfortunately, when I came to the States, uh, there's a lot of distinctions about, it happened in Panama, but I was too young to really realize when I came to the States, it really became about what you look like, who you are, who you side with. There's, America's very divided and I didn't grow up in that environment. So when I immigrated here, I became very self-aware about what I look like, you know, what I do, how I talk, how I, you know, present myself to the world because people are being evaluated constantly here with all those things in mind. And so that sort of informed the kind of work and the kind of things that I did moving forward. Was it, was it, was it scary? Was it challenging to I mean, dig deep that deep? 
it's like I'm still going through it. It's like I'm my own psychologist. I feel like artists are all a little off. We're all a little like I'm. I probably look the most normal, but everybody's like struggling, right? And everybody is artists or no artists. Everybody struggles. Just some people are more honest about how they address their issues or how they see the world and deal with the world. Um, for me, it definitely uh, felt that art became the best solution for me to express that. Like I've always been a very expressive person, whether I'm talking or you know whatever, um, and just being creative and sort of trying to say something about me that maybe I'm not good enough to convey in words, but maybe visually I can paint a better idea of where I'm coming from. And like many of my work, start a conversation. Because I love talking to people, unfortunately. <laughs> like, but so a lot of it is like, what does that mean? And I was like, oh, what do you think it means? You know, and boom, then we have a conversation. And I think a lot of the times people are not willing to engage in that kind of conversation. You, you stole my next question. Which is what? What do you want people to do? What, how do you want them to react to your art? Uh, yeah. So, like I mentioned, I think conversation because um, it, it's always difficult, right? I think there's a side for me as an artist because it means different to many people. I'm sure if you ask ten artists what art means to them and what kind of artist they are, you're gonna get ten different answers. Um, so for me, I feel like my work is pretty much self-portraits. Like I consider almost every piece, especially the last five years are just self-portraits in one way or another, right? Even if they're not titled so. So for me, it's kind of very uh, vulner being vulnerable, like being strong enough to be vulnerable. Some people saying they don't, you know, like, oh, that's not for me, it's too out there. Or somebody's like, oh, that's really good. Like, I really want to engage with you. Um, so it's kind of having the conversation and maybe deep down, having the realization that like, am I the only one that feels this way? Like, does anybody, is anybody else in the room feeling the vibe, you know? And just kind of having that conversation and expre an expression of like what I'm feeling, of who I am and things like that. Um, because that's my favorite part when I talk to other artists, you know? Uh, especially if like a piece really resonates with me, um, it's having that conversation and, and seeing how people, um, I especially like talking to non-artists or people that are not used to artwork because they usually have really good, interesting things to say. I mean, it's a mixed bag, but for the most part, I like engaging people that are not exposed that much to art or the kind of work that I make. Um, because at the end of the day, I think my work is just talking about society. It, uh, my work is a reflection of society and it's how society affects me. And so at the end of the day, it's a community engagement. It's a community dialogue that I'm having through my work. Uh, what are you doing for the exhibit? That so I have, ooh, I don't know. I gave Carlos a million things. <laughs> um, so one of the, 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 the three, I would say the three sort of main pieces are like the three directions that I've been sort of exploring with my work. One is with hair. So, you know, actual human hair, sometimes synthetic mixed in. And, and I do very, uh, I deconstruct a lot of um, things about that idea of like hair as the first impression people get, skin, you know, hair, facial, facial structures, how you speak, somebody's name. So there's different things like that, that I explore with my work. And so I use hair to kind of really um, start that dialogue um, very, I think some of my work could be considered a bit um, confrontational in the sense that I'm directly engaging uh, somebody to respond and they can't really get away with it. For example, my neon piece, which spells negra. Um, and when I talked to Carlos about it, that's a really, the, the, the way that that was designed was very specific because it was, I went to like a very commercial signage place that makes like, open for business or close or whatever. So I wanted it to look as commercial as possible, but to spell something that could or could not make some people uncomfortable. Um, and growing up, you know, the word negra was a very uh, loving sort of uh, nickname that my grandparents gave me. Like my, my grandpa 
you know, they were black and, you know, and, and they would call my grandma, oh, Negra, come here, you know, this, this, and that. It was like a nickname, like, and especially with the culture and where we were from. And so I got that nickname. So I'm the only granddaughter named after my grandma. So we both have the same name. And uh, so that sort of really resonated with me. And then I came here to the States and then there's this whole conversation, right, about um, the power of words, about reclaiming words, about what words do to people and how they're used. And so I wanted to sort of start confront people about that in both languages um, because they have the same meaning, but they're used very differently depending on who's using it and you know what's the conversation. Um, and so, you know, so that was that piece where I'm kind of very conf I'm confrontational with that word. Um, and then um, then it's also looking at the more spiritual side of, of, of my culture and growing up. So I have another piece called Rosario, which is a mold of my hands praying and it has a rosary made out of hair. And and so it's just sort of talking about growing up, you know, Catholic, Christian um, in that environment the both the comfort and the restrictions that that would entail with you know hispanic families and everything especially being a woman and you know things like that and so um all of my pieces i think are very personal but they all kind of are similarly talking about different topics that are i consider to be important for me as a person wow look forward to seeing <laughs> Hair may not be my best. <laughs> yeah. Just throw that out. <laughs> uh, do you have any other questions? Yeah. Do you, do you, uh, when we first talked, you mentioned how uh, Oxnard has treated you very well, and I wanted to to know in, in which regards. What what is why Oxnard? So Oxnard, um, it, it it became it, it was it, it just happened that my family lived in Oxnard. When we immigrated here, we lived with them, we assimilated to the culture, le learned the language, boom, go for the American dream. You're ready for the American dream. That's the uh, starter package, right? Uh, and so we did all of that, um, that whole process. And um, Oxnard was a, it is a very welcoming environment for me because, you know, my, my family, you know, Spanish speaking and things like that is very familiar. But at the same time, it was also very different because, you know, um, the way that we speak Spanish is just slightly a little bit different than the way that other, you know, Spanish speaking countries do, like in Mexico and things like that. And so it was kind of I was assimilating to two cultures. I was assimilating to America as a whole. Right. Um, trying to live the American dream, whether it exists or not. <laughs> and the uh, the Hispanic community in Ventura County. So those are, I was assimilating to two because, you know, at the end of the day, I had to find my space where I could. Um, but then even then I realized that I was having conflict, a little bit of conflict with both um, communities that we already talked about as a whole, like as America and everything like that. But even like in, in the Hispanic community, there, there is the issue of like colorism, you know, and so you still have those structures in place. So you have the high level stuff and then you have this very severe, very micro aggressive things that you could deal with. So um, I dealt with some of that um, and, uh, you know, you just kind of learn how to navigate those spaces or remove yourself from certain spaces. But overall, um, I have. I made some of the strongest and biggest connections of my life. I've been friends with the same people when I first transferred to Oxnard College till this day. So it's been like 17 years or something, something like that, almost 18 years. Like I'm really old. <laughs> and so I, I, I made those connections and, you know, like Olguin Tapia is in the show. He's like one of my best friends, you know, and I have, um, you know, Maria Villad and Aaron Datakai. So there's like four of us that we went through that whole journey together. And so we have two Filipinos, one Mexican and one Panamanian walk into a bar. And so that kind of whole situation, we sort of went through similar experiences. So all my struggles have never, for the most part, never been alone, you know, and I always had you know, um, 
the structure of my family, the foundation of my family, being supported, my sisters, my, my family, and then my friends. And so I always had something to bounce back from, whether it was art or whether it was life. Um, and so in that sense, that's why like Ventura County and Oxnard are so meaningful to me because while not everything was perfect and not everything is perfect, it's also how I feel is like the root of where everything started, you know, like I was born in Panama and I'm very, you know, proud of that and all of that. But it really I develop as an adult from here in Ventura County. And that really um, affected both positively and negatively how I saw certain things. But I, I sort of never felt alone in my journey. And I still don't, which is good. The, you also uh, mentioned that so all your work comes from your personal experiences and it relates to Panama. So in a way, once you have all those works of art at the museum, what, what conversations or what reactions do you like people? Um, I think that it's just people's misconceptions about about like in particular to me but just society as a whole just having that conversation like for the Hispanic community or the Latin community in Ventura County just sort of addressing those things right because there's not a lot of like Panamanians in Ventura County there's some but there's not that many there's not that many Afro Latinos um, in Latin in, in, in Ventura County um, and so sometimes when I put, and I've had this feedback before with my work, when I sort of put it out there and they know who I am and they realize, oh, you know, it, it's like, it's fascinating to them, right? Because they're like, oh, that's right. Somebody could look black, <laughs> you know, and speak Spanish. And, you know, a lot of the times people, what did you learn English? Or where did you learn Spanish? And I'm like, oh, it's my first language. Um, so it's, it's sort of the realization for a lot of people. I think like now we're like in 2024 and people are more aware of things and but I think that what I would want to kind of get out of the show and the people exploring uh, my work and seeing it for the first time is sort of um, sort of like understanding and looking outside their own um, sit their own situation in life and just looking um, at people you know across the way and realizing that we have more in common that we don't. I think that we divide ourselves up, put ourselves in little boxes all the time. Oh, I'm this, this, and this, that's it. Um, but people and uh, people are more complicated than that. And so what I would want to um, sort of get out of, you know, a conversation, start a conversation with people is what is it, their perception of like my work and how does that relate to them? How does how what do they think about what I'm trying to say to them and just kind of start that dialogue and conversation because I think it it's uncomfortable it's very uncomfortable but I kind of like doing those things that are uncomfortable I like not being comfortable <laughs> uh when I get too comfortable I'm like okay I need to switch it up I need to change it up and so doing things like um, the work at the museum are me sort of um engaging the audience at their level but with my own um, ideas and my own feelings and my own thoughts. And I think just starting that conversation, what is their perception about when they see the hair, when they look at the rosary, when they read the word negra, like what, what, what is that engaging? You know, is it, you know, hitting some uncomfortable places about how they perceive the world and people? Um, and how can you develop from that? How can we become a more welcoming environment for everybody? Um, and so I think, I think that would be what comes to mind at first.